The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, we're talking to Leo Galland. He is a board-certified internist and is recognized as a world leader in integrated medicine. He is the co-author of The Allergy Solution, Unlock the Surprising Hidden Truth About Why You Are Sick and How to Get Well. Leo, welcome to the show. It's really a pleasure to be speaking with, with you today, Rebecca. Well, what brought you to write a book about allergies? Well, there's an epidemic of allergies in the world. I see it all the time in my practice. I see it all the time outside my practice. There are over a billion people who have allergies today, and that's just for known allergic diseases. Um, There's an untold number that have hidden allergies that contribute to problems like chronic fatigue and arthritis and brain fog. And it seemed to me that There was a real need for people to understand the causes of this epidemic because they are reversible. This is a new postmodern disease, post-industrial disease, and um, and that for people to to be able to understand how they can start taking steps right away to reverse the impact of allergies on their lives. Well, maybe you can just explain a little bit about what allergies are. An allergic reaction is an adverse reaction to something that is in the environment um, or that's swallowed. So it's either breathed in, touches the skin, or is swallowed. That involves activation of the immune system. The substance that causes the reaction is a trigger. And what the immune response does is it dramatically amplifies the body's reaction to the trigger. That's why a minuscule amount of exposure can cause a catastrophic reaction for certain kinds of allergies. So you said that there are a lot of hidden allergies as well, and I know most people listening are probably thinking, well, anaphylaxis, when you can't breathe and, and, you know, your face swells up. But what is a hidden allergy? Well, um, when there's an allergic reaction in your body, there is, there's a release of chemicals that is the immune, the immune system activates certain cells that are responsive to the allergic signal. These cells release chemicals and they can affect your body in almost any way imaginable. Um, There's hardly a symptom that I can think of that has not been a manifestation of allergy in somebody. Whether, and there's no organ that's uh, immune from the effects of allergy. Uh, From the brain to the skin to the joints Uh, even the heart, uh, certainly the lungs, the liver, the intestines, um, the kidneys, they can all be affected by allergic reactions. And so there are potentially hundreds of symptoms that might be allergic. And if these symptoms don't occur in a dramatic and obviously allergic fashion, if they're delayed, for example, and don't follow the exposure to the trigger within uh, a few minutes or a couple of hours, it's easy to, to miss the role of hidden allergy. 
Um, and I can give you, uh, I have several examples in the allergy solution of hidden allergies affecting people, but it, it really could be anything. I once saw a woman with severe chronic kidney disease that actually was due to a food allergy. It turned out to be an allergy to eggs. Well, you know, in the two years she'd been treated, no one had even suspected an allergy. Um, but using a technique of the type that I described in the allergy solution, we were able to identify that it was an egg allergy, avoiding eggs in their multiple forms, um, totally eliminated the kidney disease or the need for the toxic meds she was taking. Well, that, that's pretty significant. So aside from something that severe, like kidney disease, um, what, what other symptoms are people experiencing that could be from an allergy? Um, well, you know, as I've said, it could almost be anything. Um, and, you know, the obvious allergic symptoms are things like wheezing and coughing, um, diarrhea, skin rashes, um, but arthritis, sometimes mimicking rheumatoid arthritis can be the result of an allergy, and that's usually food. Occasionally, there's an environmental mold that plays a, a role. Uh, in fact, um, some studies have shown that almost 50% of people with rheumatoid arthritis are allergic to specific foods and that their arthritis is improved by avoiding those foods and triggered by eating those foods. Um, the, among the most intriguing effects of allergies are the effects on the brain and, and on mood. And these have been, um, there have been descriptions of what we'll call brain allergy uh, going back at least 60 or 70 years. Uh, but it, it seems to be getting more prevalent. And uh, certainly among Kids, especially kids with attention deficit disorder, um, particularly if they're hyperactive, the majority of those kids uh, have food allergies that are, that are either contributing to or the sole cause of their behavioral problem. Well, that, that's pretty significant because, you know, that's on the rise as well as, you know, asthma and a, and a lot of what you're talking about. Um, is there an increase in allergies? Absolutely. That's what the epidemic represents. It's occurred in stages. And if you go back um, and just look at the history of allergy, um, before about the middle of the 19th century, the concept of allergy really didn't exist. Um, it takes something simple like hay fever, which is a seasonal allergy affecting the nose. There's no description of that in any of the medical literature going back thousands of years until you get to the 19th century. And then a few cases start to be reported. Um, it became clear with things like hay fever um, that this is something that occurred in cities and it actually is related to pollution. Uh, industrial pollution but even more so automotive pollution. And it dramatically increased during the 20th century. Levels are continuing to increase. Um, but then around the middle of the 20th century, the second wave of um, allergy became evident, and that was asthma. And, and starting in the mid-20th century, there was a dramatic increase in in the um, prevalence of asthma in the Western world and in the United States in particular. And this was probably related to indoor pollution. Uh, for one thing, people started spending a lot more time indoors because of television. And uh, there were a lot of things that were brought into the home that hadn't been present before. Roughly 100,000 different chemicals, formaldehyde, Maybe being maybe the most toxic because there was this move towards the use of glued wood products, particle board, pressed wood. Uh, very interesting research that was done in Australia at um, Monash University that looked at the levels of formaldehyde in indoor air in homes. Um, and formaldehyde is present in bedrooms, kitchens, uh, living rooms, just throughout the home, and it's related to 
um, building material and furnishings and fabrics. New clothing, for example, is stiffened with formaldehyde. You walk into a mall, um, and there's this kind of pungent odor in the air, especially where the clothing stores are. That's due to the formaldehyde being released from the clothing that's just been hung out. Fabric stores are loaded with it. And the, these Australian researchers found a direct link between levels of formaldehyde in homes and the likelihood that children growing up in those homes would have allergies of any type, um, in particular um, uh, asthma at the higher levels of formaldehyde exposure. Um, so that was the next um, wave of the epidemic. Then beginning around the 1990s, there was a dramatic increase in food allergy so that the prevalence of allergy to nuts among children in the U.S., and uh, the U.K. tripled between 1995 and about 2010. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of allergic reactions to nuts are hard to miss. It's not just that people are looking for these because these are anaphylactic reactions. They can be life-threatening. So this was a true increase in food allergy. Now, um, I believe that that increase is related to disturbances in gut microbes. The gut microbiome is what that sum total of bacteria and other organisms living in the gut is, um, which has something to do with increasing use of antibiotics and pesticides, the introduction of um, uh, agents in farming that are essentially um, antibiotics in the way they affect bacteria and um, uh, and, and anti-infective things like triclosan and, and other um, uh, and uh, other products, antibacterials added to soap um, and to personal care products. So with this pollution of personal care and food. Um, in addition to the outdoor and the indoor, indoor environment, we started to see a massive increase in food allergies, which is the third wave of the epidemic. And food allergies um, can be really um, tricky because with mo a lot of environmental allergies, you can tell if there's an, an environmental connection. You change the environment. Uh, people tend to eat the same in different environments. Um, a lot of foods are staple foods throughout the world, and the symptoms of food allergy um, can be so subtle and difficult to track down without a systematic approach. So um, I just want to, um, everything you said, um, you know, it rings true for I think anybody who's gone through any sort of health journey. And um, I want to talk about them a little more. So the the environmental impact, um, you know, I've done shows on the chemicals we brought in our homes. And, and I know when I went through my health journey um, battling Lyme, I couldn't go into a mall. And I, I was about five minutes in a mall, and then I was done for the rest of the day. But I could go outside and go for a long walk. And, um, you know, I, I still I, – I wouldn't go be in a mall for more than two hours now because there's a limit, but I'm a lot better than I was. And I think a lot of people don't even realize that we're being exposed to this. You know, they want to get out of the house, so, so they go somewhere or their house is toxic and they're too sick to go out and and not realizing that their environment needs to be safe as well. Um, what you just said about your experience with malls, um, you know, in Lyme disease and, and intolerance um, for environmental intolerance um, leads me to one of the conclusions that, I, that I've arrived at after many, many years of clinical practice, but also after doing the research that went into um, writing the allergy solution along with my son, Jonathan. And um, uh, John did an amazing amount of research on some of the environmental toxicities. Um, the conclusion that I came to is that allergy is actually a manifestation of toxicity and that the main driver 
behind the epidemic of allergies is toxicity and impairment of detoxification pathways. And there's some really interesting stuff. I mean, look, the, writing the book was an amazing trip for us because it's just the allergy solution is packed with um, information that that is actually pretty fascinating and some and and studies by terrific researchers all over the world. But on the toxicity front, one of the most interesting studies was done at UCLA where um, the researchers took people who had allergies and exposed them to diesel exhaust at levels that it would be find, found in L.A. if you're walking under a, an overpass uh, by a freeway. Um, and so was, these were ambient diesel exhaust particle levels that you get in U.S. cities. They're not just some laboratory study. They then exposed them to the uh, substances to which they're allergic, um, you know, pollens, basically. And they found that pre-exposure to the diesel exhaust uh, not only um, created a strong inflammatory reaction in their bodies, it also really aggravated the degree of allergic reactivity that these people had. They then fed them broccoli sprouts. Um, it would be the equivalent of eating about six ounces of raw broccoli a day, but it was just two or three tablespoons of uh, broccoli sprouts ground up. And within three days, the ability to detoxify the diesel exhaust particles had shot up dramatically. And soon after that, if the people were exposed to diesel exhaust, it did not aggravate their allergic reactivity. Well, you know, that makes sense. Um, you know, now I, c- I, I can be exposed as opposed to the five minutes and I'm all in the past, although I choose not to be. Um, as I, I know, it, how is that good for anybody with our <laughs> right. exposure, right? <laughs> um, we are going to take a quick break. We're talking today with Leo Galland. He is the author, the co-author of The Allergy Solution, Unlock the Surprising Hidden Truth About Why You Are Sick and How to Get Well. We'll be back shortly. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. Can grief be good for you? Absolutely. It gets your attention, helping you evaluate your choices and relationships. Your losses define who you are. Tune in each week for Good Grief with host Cheryl Jones. Our show features those who have made incredible transformations by grieving their losses. You'll learn how to find your courage and strength. You'll discover the important things in your life and how to let go of things that are less important. Good Grief airs live Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern on Voice America Health and Wellness. Have you friended us on Facebook yet? Why not? Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for the keywords Voice America. Once you are part of our Facebook network, you'll receive daily messages about what's happening with our shows, this week's featured guests, and new happenings at the Voice America Talk Radio Network. And you can add your voice to the always active discussions on our timeline. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for Voice America. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Riss. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Riss. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, we're talking with Leo Galland. He is the co-author of The Allergy Solution, Unlock the Surprising Hidden Truth About Why You're Sick and How to Get Well. So, Leo, before the break, um, 
we we talked about you know the causes of allergies and all the the toxins in our environment but you also mentioned um, how important our, our gut microbes are can you explain that a little bit um, sure it's been an area that I've researched and worked with clinically for about 30 years and of and it's getting a lot of attention in the scientific world for the past five to ten years, uh, which is well-deserved. There are at least as many bacteria that live in your body as you have human cells. About, you know, 95% of them are in the GI tract. and um, But they also play important roles on all the surfaces of your body, which are just carpeted with them. Uh, and And so... Uh, the skin, the lungs, uh, the sinus cavities, they all have, each of them has its own unique group of bacteria called the microbiome, and yeasts are included in there too. The, in, the, in the gut, these bacteria have a special role. They are kind of like the drill sergeants for your immune system. They train your immune cells in terms of their reactivity. Now, the purpose of the immune system is to help you uh, resist infection and recover from injury. And it works through a very delicate balance. Um, it doesn't, it, we don't want it to overreact or underreact. We want all the reactions to be appropriate uh, and limited in the right way. Two-thirds of your immune system is located in your intestinal tract. And those cells are exposed to the bacteria in your gut. And the nature of the bacteria determines how those cells develop. Those cells then spread throughout your body and return to the gut. And they communicate messages to all the other cells in the immune system in every other part of your body. And um, the, there are at least a thousand species, different species of these bacteria in your gut. And the balance among them, their diversity, um, the, and sometimes particular types of organisms have been shown to have an impact on immune function, on metabolism, on brain function, and on allergy. And um, one of the big factors in food allergy is, are disturbances in gut microbes that allow the allergic state to develop. Uh, it's been best documented in children, but it occurs in adults as well. And so if you take a broad-spectrum antibiotic, um, it can devastate the cells, the, the bacteria in your gut. Um, but worse than that, worse than the, broad, than the antibiotics, which are only taken for, let's say, 10 days, and so, so it's like a storm goes through, but if you have a healthy gut, it can repair itself and the bacteria can build up their communities again. Um, exposure to antibiotics in food which is kind of low levels of um, antibiotic exposure on a daily basis if you're not eating organic, that has a more devastating effect on your gut. Exposure to um, different antibacterials in shampoos and soaps and toothpastes and other things that you may inadvertently be absorbing into your body. That can devastate those, and that's another exposure that tends to happen on a daily basis at a low level. Um, so what we, the one thing that is best established about allergies and gut microbes is that a loss of diversity of the microbes that live in your gut it seems to be a universal feature of allergic disorders. And restoring diversity helps to balance the immune system. So I, I liken it to a rainforest. I mean, your body is like a tropical rainforest teeming with life. And 
in a rainforest, biodiversity is the sign of health, and loss of diversity is the sign of destruction of the rainforest. So, so I think it's important to think about your body as an ecologic system, and everything that it's exposed to and everything that, it, that goes into it may have an impact that exceeds just the single exposure. How does it affect the whole community that you are? Hmm. So when when we're looking at all of this, um, how can somebody figure out if they're having an allergic reaction? You know, I guess as an example, it took me a long time to realize that I was reacting to the chemicals in the mall or other people's perfumes because it was, you just don't realize that that's what you're breathing in. Right. So how can right. people so, figure this out? Well, in the allergy solution, we have a whole chapter that is devoted to that. There's a um, self-questionnaire and checklist that is designed to help you recognize whether any of the symptoms that you have or any of the things that are bothering you might be allergic in origin, and if so, what the likely allergic triggers are. Because the most dramatic relief of a chronic illness that, I, that I've ever seen occurs if there's an allergic trigger that is the primary basis for that illness and a person can identify the trigger and remove it so they're not exposed to it. I mean, that can, uh, that can have the kind of results that people talk about as, oh, this is a miracle. Um, so that's definitely the first step is trying to identify what the triggers are and avoid them. Now, if the triggers are food-related, which is often the case these days, especially if it's a food that you eat regularly, you may have a very hard time figuring that out. And so I have a, a whole chapter. We have a whole chapter in the Allergy Solution uh, devoted to a technique called the Power Wash, which is... Um, which actually does uh, three things at the same time. Uh, one thing that it does is it removes all of the, or almost all of the potential, potentially alert allergenic foods from your diet for a few days. Uh, at the same time, it nourishes you in a way that is probably better than you've been nourished previously with food. Uh, to start building up your ability to detoxify. Uh, and then there is a technique uh, called reentry, which is which helps you identify how different foods are affecting your body, what your body is happy with and what it's not happy with. But in order in order to be able to tap into that, uh, which is kind of the wisdom of, of the body, you first need the cleanse. You have to really detoxify through the power wash. Then you'll get clear signals. If you don't do that, the signals will be you get from your body will be very confusing. Uh, and then once you've done that, uh, then there's uh, another chapter devoted to a dietary approach to balancing immunity using what you've learned by going through the power wash and reentry. So what what are the most common foods that are triggering people? Uh, well, um, they're mostly the foods that we eat every day and and um, kind of the what I call the final four, because it's the final four in reentry, but it may be, you could think of it as the front four in terms of the allergy epidemic. Uh, there's wheat, dairy, corn, and soy. These are the staples of the North American diet, and um, and they are major. Um, they contribute in a major way to the burden of food allergy that people experience. So, so when you talk about um, the re-entry, the final four, is that uh, that's part of the power wash? So you're reintroducing foods. Yeah, yeah. Once you. Once you've cleaned out and nourished, which you can do in a few days, or you can start that process, remember the UCLA researchers, 
saw an effect of broccoli sprouts within three days. That was all it took. And they weren't doing anything but adding them. They weren't removing anything. Um, so the um, you, then you start um, eating different foods in a very systematic, organized fashion and determining how these foods affect your body. Um, you have a checklist of um, symptoms and signs that you're going to be following. Um, and there's a schedule and a way to do it. Um, so that over a couple of weeks, you can really zero in on what it has been making your body unhealthy or unhappy. And that gives you the basis for moving forward for a really healthy diet that can balance your immune system. Now, only eating um, the foods that you're accustomed to that don't bother you may not be enough. You may need to add other foods that contribute nutrients that your body needs for immune balance. Uh, and so that's the purpose of the chapter devoted to the immune balance diet. You know, um, there's a, a portion in your book where you, you talk about a patient who um, you realize that she has to cut out dairy because she is very resistant to cutting it out and you realize she's addicted. Is that really common with these foods? Um, well, I see it often in my practice. Um, I think one of the things that there are um, withdrawal reactions that can occur. If you're eating a food that you are allergic to and you're doing it every day, it's kind of a, it's a regular part of the way that you eat. Your body adjusts to the fact that you have this constant exposure. And when you pull that exposure away, it takes your body a few days to readjust and I think that's the kind of thing that produces the withdrawal reaction the cravings for it yeah well, it, right and so yeah. you start to so you feel worse or sick in some ways you actually may crave it um, but if you can if you can give it five days the cravings will go away and the withdrawal reaction will go away Okay. Um, so uh, if we feel that way about a certain food, is that a sign that it's something we should give up for a while? Yeah, absolutely. It's the foods that you crave are often, especially if, you, if these cravings are really hard to control, um, okay. are often the foods that you're allergic to. Okay, interesting. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with Leo Galland. He's the co-author of The Allergy Solution, Unlock the Surprising Hidden Truth About Why You're Sick and How to Get Well. We'll be back shortly. Become our friend on Facebook. Post your thoughts about our shows and network on our timeline. Visit Facebook.com forward slash Voice America. Can grief be good for you? Absolutely. It gets your attention, helping you evaluate your choices and relationships. Your losses define who you are. Tune in each week for Good Grief with host Cheryl Jones. Our show features those who have made incredible transformations by grieving their losses. You'll learn how to find your courage and strength. You'll discover the important things in your life and how to let go of things that are less important. Good Grief airs live Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern on Voice America Health & Wellness. Have you friended us on Facebook yet? Why not? Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for the keywords Voice America. Once you are part of our Facebook network, you'll receive daily messages about what's happening with our shows, this week's featured guests, and new happenings at the Voice America Talk Radio Network. And you can add your voice to the always active discussions on our timeline. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash Voice America or search for Voice America. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. 
Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Falling Through the Cracks. Today, we're talking to Leo Galland. He is a board-certified internist and is recognized as a world leader in integrated medicine. He is a co-author of The Allergy Solution, Unlock the Surprising Hidden Truth About Why You're Sick and How to Get Well. So, Leo, we talked a lot about, you know, the the chemical um, exposure causing allergies and bean allergies and uh, food allergies, but there's also um, hay fever, as you said, when you're talking about allergies, um, you know, hundred and some years ago, there, there wasn't even a word for hay fever. So, so what is that and what, what's going on there? Well, um, pollen allergies, hay fever is the term that's generally used to refer to pollen allergies and uh, those are seasonal. The spring and late summer are the main times for those. Right now, um, in North America, we're heading into pollen season. Uh, everyone's predicting that it's going to be a bad year. But I, I have to say, I hear that every year. I've never, I, I can't ever remember a year in which um, the predictions were, ah, this is not going to be a bad year for allergies. Don't worry about it. it. There are always cries of alarm going out. And that has a lot to do with global warming and pollution. Um, and I reviewed that topic. John did a lot of great research on that for the um, for our book, The Allergy Solution. Um, right now, the earliest of the pollen exposures is generally tree pollen. Birch pollen, which is very prevalent in North America, is one of the earliest forms, uh, is one of the earliest pollens. And, and there's some, there are a couple of inter- really interesting aspects to pollen allergy that we talk about in the allergy solution. One is the impact of probiotics in reducing the severity of, of pollen allergy. And the other is the relationship between pollen and food. Um, I'll start with the probiotics because it takes about three weeks for probiotics to have an effect. But n- multiple um, clinical trials in different countries in different parts of the world have shown that a variety of probiotic supplements started before allergy season and continued throughout the season can decrease allergic reactivity. Um, The type of probiotic that's had the best track record are the lactobacillus probiotics. and one species in particular, Lactobacillus paracasei, has had the most clinical trials showing its effectiveness. But it can take three to eight weeks before it works. And the benefits will last for months after you've taken it for several weeks. The effect is not like a drug or an antihistamine or something. That's why the effect takes a long time. It actually, they actually work by changing your immune system because these bacteria enter into the um, pool of microbes in your gut. Um, The other thing that's really fascinating, and it especially applies to birch pollen, is the cross-reactivity between pollens and food. Uh, There are a number of healthy plant-derived foods that are similar to pollen uh, in the the way they they impact on the immune system. Uh, It's called cross-reactivity. And birch pollen in particular cross-reacts with things like apples and nuts uh, and celery. And avoiding birch pollen reactive foods during birch pollen season, which we're about to enter, for people with birch pollen allergy can have a significant effect in improving allergic symptoms. In particular, the itchy kind of symptoms. Um, itching of the mouth and um, throat that can occur, Um, but even the nasal itching and the eye itching. So that combination, avoiding birch pollen foods, getting started on a probiotic, are are two things that we advocate in the allergy solution. So... um Aside aside from that, say somebody's you know wanting to get started and they do your your um, 
your power wash. Um, are there other things along with that that they should look at? Um, I know one thing you talked about was stress reduction. How important is that for this process? Well, there, there are a lot. There's been a lot of research indicating that stress impacts on the immune system. It, of, it increases stress react. Um, the re- immune allergic type reactivity, and so the impact of stress is is actually twofold. It alters the immune system and makes it more allergic in the way it reacts. It also makes you much more susceptible to the negative effects of symptoms you experience, and that cuts across all illnesses. People who have any kind of symptom, pain, fatigue, um, or allergic symptoms will experience them more if they're stressed. Okay. And there, there are a number of studies on stress reduction technique techniques, yoga and meditation, um, in their effects on allergies, and especially asthma. Okay. So when we're doing the stress reduction, say somebody has asthma, um, what effects can they start to see if this is starting to work? Uh, Decreased need for medication, decreased symptoms, and increased tolerance for triggers. Now, uh, and this is, this is similar to you, what you described about your experience with malls. And, of course, you don't want to um, overload yourself on triggers anyway, but, mm-hmm. but you have a great deal more freedom in your life if you're not so sensitive to them. Yeah, exactly. Well, whereas I I basically couldn't go in a mall, I mean, five minutes isn't really a shopping experience. Um, I can go now. Um, I choose to limit it because I know what's in there. Um, And, you know, I know it's even if I wasn't reacting, it wouldn't be good for me. But um, it definitely does give a lot of freedom to have that limited reaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So how important is sleep in our recovery? Well, of course, we all people actually vary in their need for sleep, um, but um, sleep has been shown to definitely affect immune function, and how much a person needs probably varies from seven to nine hours, depending on the individual. The um, quality of sleep is just as important as the duration of sleep. Okay. Um, can allergies affect our sleep? Oh, yeah. And actually, um, you know, there's studies that have been done just with simple nasal allergies uh, and kids and people who, and workers. And nasal allergies impact job performance, sleep, uh, and school performance. And to some extent, the interference with school performance has been shown to be directly related to the interference with sleep. Okay. Um, so definitely important to do this work if this is going on. It's not just an, an irritation. It's affecting your entire life. Right. And, yeah, let me, there's, uh, let me just talk about the impact of pollen allergy on driving and brain function. There's a fascinating study that we talk about in the book that was done in the Netherlands where um, the researchers took people who had pollen allergies and they studied them out of season on a closed driving course. They had them perform a number of maneuvers and um, they scored them. And then they had them repeat the same uh, test a little bit later after exposing them to just a tiny amount of the pollen to which they were allergic. Well, usually when you take a test a second time, you do better. All these people did worse. And the amount of impairment that they experienced was equivalent to what would happen to most people after drinking two cocktails. Wow. That's the extent to which pollen allergy affected their brains. There was a similar study done not with driving, but with um, computational performance uh, and test performance among U.S. veterans. 
done in Washington, D.C. Exact same findings. Um, the, the allergies affected these people as if they had had alcohol or a sedative drug. That's what it can do to the brain. Well, that's pretty significant if most of us are, are being affected by allergies, whether it's pollen allergies or the food allergies, we're, we're all being impaired in some way. Yeah, well, that's, I, I mean, I see that in the world around me all the time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that something needs to, to change so that we can all function a little better. So aside from the elimination of the allergies, um, are there any supplements that people can take to help them recover? Oh, yeah, right. I mean, the first step is eliminating allergens. The second step is not so much taking supplements, but following a diet that nourishes the immune system, and that's explained in the allergy solution. Um, And we have um, the immune balance diet which can help people do that because there there are specific nutrients that you're not going to be able to get from supplements anyway that you need to get from food that help your immune system balance itself and they encourage the um, growth and the function of a group of white blood cells called Tregs that balance the immune system Uh, and these include um, oolong tea and strawberries and parsley. Uh, it's, it's all laid out there, and there are food-based supplements, soups, um, smoothies, um, teas, that we encourage our readers uh, to explore. Um, and th- but then there are specific supplements that can help with allergic reactivity. Uh, I talked about the impact of probiotics, which have mostly been proved in uh, allergic rhinitis, nasal allergies, whether they're seasonal or year-round, whatever the trigger is, whether it's pollen or dust. Uh, They've also been shown to help with eczema, um, which may, whether it's environmental or food-related. Omega-3s can be a really important supplement. And most of the research there has been done with asthma. um, And there are a couple of dozen studies that I review in the allergy solution done in all over the world really using different uh, preparations of omega-3 rich oils uh, fish oils, even krill oil um, and at different doses and they've all shown that increasing the amount of omega-3s um, in your diet through supplementation can significantly lessen asthma, but the effects take a while. Uh, they, may, they may take three or four months to occur, because again, this is not like a drug. This is, these omega-3s are entering into your cells, and the first effects can be measured in a laboratory in two or three weeks, but you may not feel them. Um, the second set of effects may be measured by your doctor within uh, two or three months, but it may take six months before you really feel the difference. So you have to um, hang in there with it. Antioxidants um, can have a a significant impact. Um, We have a whole chapter devoted to the body's major, most important antioxidant, which is called glutathione. Glutathione is made up of uh, three amino acids, It is the major antioxidant in your cells, um, and it's one of the most important detoxifiers in your body. Uh, Supplementing with glutathione or its precursor, cysteine, which is available in the form of NAC or N-acetylcysteine, that's been shown to have significant benefits. you have to be very careful with vitamin E, and I have a whole um, I have a section um, in the in the book related to the different forms of vitamin E and the sources of it. Uh, some interesting research uh, done at Northwestern University in Chicago uh, found that there was increasing asthma with exposure to some forms of vitamin E, which are found in soybean oil. 
Um, and even though these are advocated as antioxidants, uh, gamma tocopherol is the name, um, it actually aggravated asthma and was associated with worse lung function. So um, we have advice on being careful about how you choose your vitamin E supplements. Um, so, Leo, I, I think this is a great topic, and I, I want anybody who's listening, which I think is everybody who's listening, who feels like they're being affected by this, to find more information. So how can they get a hold of you or your book or find more information on this topic? Okay. okay. Well, The Allergy Solution is available in bookstores. Uh, it actually was a bestseller in Canada, and um, we love Canadians. They are really interested in improving their health and not finding quick fixes. Um, it And, of course, it's available online um, through um, re, um, retailers online. We have a website, drgalland.com, that's D-R-G-A-L-L-A-N-D.com, which has lots of information um, about the book and the ideas in it. Um, and... Um, in the U.S., I recorded a public television special, which is airing in numerous cities in March. Um, last June, I know it was um, watched in, on many, city, many cities in Canada. It's still airing in the U.S. and may reach um, some places north of the border this March. Okay, perfect. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. This was a really informative episode. All right, great to talk with you. Um, I always Thanks. love to talk about this topic. <laughs> Me too. Well, thanks so much. And I want to thank everybody for listening today. Be sure to make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views.